I didn't know anything about Milwaukee. I did not know anything about this neighborhood. I just knew that I was the executive director of an organization that uh, ran a farmer's market, and the farmer's market's mission was to bring fresh produce into a part of town where you know, there were not that many grocery stores where you could get uh, fresh local produce. So when you're an executive director, you have to know all of the things and, and you have to be very vocal about what you're going to do. And so I was all about fixing the food desert. I called it the food desert. Um, I, I would go to bed at night saying, I'm gonna have to teach these people how to eat broccoli, how to appreciate salad. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I would just go through the same recitation of statistics on obesity and lack of health, lack of uh, healthy foods in the community. And uh, early on, I got a grant to run a co healthy cooking demonstration. Uh, series, and I decided to hold that uh, cooking demonstration series using fresh vegetables at a uh, food bank. And so I'm at the food bank setting up, and I'm, and I'm chopping, you know, I have a little stove, you know, I have a recipe, and I'm chopping onions. And this is in the springtime, and the onions had been in storage for a while. The onions were really potent. Mm -hmm. Tears are streaming down my face. And one right in front of the line of people waiting to get free food at the pantry. And one woman says to me, you're chopping your onions wrong. And, I, and so I said, really? And so I handed her the knife. <laughs> she took the top and the bottom half off the onion, chopped it in half. And instead of removing the outer peel, no wait, she kept the root end intact. And she took the outer peel and use that as a handle. And she just went bam, 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 and diced onion. She said, do it this way, use this, the peel as a handle. If your knife is dull, you won't cut yourself, you know, and you won't be crying so much. <laughs> and uh, so I made the, made the recipe. I'm making little handing out samples and people are saying, uh, you know, I like, I like that with less salt, or you, you use too much garlic, or have you tried, have you, tried uh, you know, this or that? And um, I wasn't prepared for that level of sophistication. I wasn't prepared for that level of cooking knowledge. So after that, for the next week, I was thinking, okay, you know, who was, who was helping who at, in that demonstration? And so I started to ask more questions and was told that really in up until the 1950s, 1960s, you know, now if you go into a restaurant, if you look in back, all the help is Hispanic. But up until the 60s and 70s, if you went in the back of any Milwaukee restaurant, um, the help, the people who were doing the cooking were predominantly African American. And up until, the black liberation movement, you know, when the idea of cooking someone else's food seemed to be kind of a quaint, not so cool job, that's when a lot of people left the restaurant industry and that's how we got to the primarily Hispanic uh, workforce in the restaurant that we see today. Um, so I learned that history. And so I started poking around some in the community and I noticed uh, at my farmer's market there were people leaving the farmer's market every Saturday with two or three industrial-sized garbage bags full of, of, of leafy greens, collard greens, mustard greens. And I thought, you know, they're having a party or something. And, but I saw this one lady, you know, every Saturday. And I'm, <laughs> she must be a caterer. Um, and, you know, but I, I said, what are you doing with that? She goes, I'm blanching and freezing. And so I followed her home one day. Uh, she, I asked her permission <laughs> to follow her home. And um, she showed me. Um, she would have some friends over. They would set up four big pots of boiling water, salt the water a little bit, 
and then I said, but that's a, you know, you've got all these greens here. You know, you have to wash all the sand out, right? Are you going to wash it in the bathtub? What are you going to do? And she said, no, I just take apart the greens and put them in my washing machine and wash them on gentle cycle. And that's how I get the sand out. And um, then she would just put the greens, dunk them in the boiling water for 30 seconds, fish them out. She had an ice bath ready to go to cool off the vegetables, stop the cooking. She would squeeze all the, vegetable, all the water out of the vegetables, put them in two, bag, two layers of uh, freezer bags, and then throw them in the freezer. And she opened up her freezer, and it was just a wall of green. And uh, she said, you know, my family moved here from uh, Mississippi. And when we realized that we could not get the vegetables we wanted year round, you know, we knew that we would have to do something. And so uh, washing vegetables in a washing machine on gentle cycle. I mean, that's ingenious. Uh, no dietitian from you know, outside of Milwaukee is ever going to come up with that kind of a solution for getting people the vegetables that they need. And so um, I guess I learned to see individuals, to not design programming aimed at stereotyping, um, and to try to find uh, the strengths that uh, you know, in my stereotype view of the neighborhood, I was not really able or willing to see. So. <laughs>